what scales should we use if we want to scale numerical data and keep some information on how different values are related to each other. One option is to use ordinal scales. In an ordinal scale defined for an ordered set P, scale values and scale attributes are both all the elements of P. In our case, these are our four degrees, very weak, weak, medium and rich. And then we put a cross between a scale value x and a scale attribute y if x is less than or equal to y. So here a scale attribute x should actually be understood as a, at most x. Rich is at most rich, medium is at most medium and at most rich and so on. If we use a similar ordinal scale for every attribute, here is what we'll get for two of our objects. Another option is to use interordinal scales. Formally, an interordinal scale is in a position of two ordinal scales on the same set, but with reverse orders. A position is obtained by, so to say, gluing together two contexts with the same objects and renaming attributes if necessary. Here is a concrete example. Here, every value x contributes two attributes, at least x and at most x. The scale value weak has attributes at least weak, at least very weak, at most rich, at most medium, and at most weak. Yet another option is a biordinal scale. If we have two disjoint partially ordered sets P and Q, we form the union of the corresponding ordinal scales by taking the union of P and Q as both objects and attributes, and the union of the two partial orders as the incidence relation. So elements of P are not related to elements of Q in the resulting context. This is called a biordinal scale. In our example, we can split the set of values into two parts, P being rich, medium and weak, and Q consisting of very weak. And we'll get the following scale. Here, very weak is considered as absence of uh, the chemical element, and attributes in P are considered as different degrees of presence of the element. We can show this more clearly by renaming scale attributes. Here is the result in formal context. And here is its concept lattice. Now we can analyze it and maybe spot some implications. For example, if we look at objects rich in calcium, we'll see that they are also rich in aluminum and contain at least some copper. Of course, which implications we'll see in a derived context heavily depends on what scales we use. There is no universal recipe. One might have to experiment with different scaling schemas to see which one is more suitable for a particular application.